Why is it that when I pick up this cup, I don't just throw it across the room? I mean, I'm not the strongest person in the world, but I feel like my muscles have the potential to do that, and yet they don't. In fact, if you really sit and think about this, you might start wondering, well, how do I know how much force to use for anything? Like taking steps, for instance, or, you know, pushing someone away gently and not like throwing them across the room yourself. You know, like, how do we know how much force to use? It's a fascinating question. And in today's video, we're going to be using one of Ken Hub's brand new physiology study units to help explain it. This study unit is on motor neurons. And we're going to be looking at a very small portion of this. This is a premium feature, um, but it's going to be really fascinating nonetheless. And this is part of a brand new, or, or our brand new physiology section, which is something we've been working at very hard behind the scenes. And in fact, to celebrate, we are providing a 100% free study unit on reflex arcs. That's a separate topic than what we're going to be looking at today, but it is so worth your time to investigate. You can go ahead and find a link down in the description below. But let's go ahead and explain how you don't throw things every which way whenever you're trying to pick something up. And so what you are looking at here is a skeletal muscle and we are telescoping it. So basically we're looking at it as it's like you can see like where the tendon is, where you can see like the fascia, the epimysium, the paramysium. We're not really focused on all the connective tissue layers. Just understand we're going deeper into the muscle until eventually we get to these green tubes here. These are the muscle cells. So the muscle cells, these are obviously the things that are going to contract. But then if you look, you can even telescope that further and find that there are these really long tubes of protein called myofibrils and that is where the functional units of the skeletal muscle cell are again we're not really focused on that in today's video just understanding uh, just what we're looking at here and then the other thing we are looking at is a cross section of the spinal cord and we can also see that a spinal nerve is being built or you know different spinal nerves on um, coming out of it so for example back here this is something called the dorsal root and this big bulge here is called the dorsal root ganglion. That's where sensory information is gonna come into the spinal cord. And then on this side though, and you can see, you know, we have like a, in the spinal cord, we can see it kind of looks like a Rorschach test to me. If you ever seen those ink blot tests that psychologists are like, what do you see, you know, type of thing. Um, right here in the front part of it, we call this the anterior or ventral horn. What we can see is there is a motor neuron which again, this is part of the motor neuron study unit. Um, a motor neuron is leaving it. And what it's doing is it's exiting and it's going through something called the ventral root, which is then going to combine with the dorsal root here at something called the spinal nerve trunk. From the spinal nerve trunk, it's then gonna go out a ventral ramus. And this is where we start to name the nerve. So like it kind of depends on where we're at, right? So if you've ever heard of like the sciatic nerve, or uh, the median nerve, or the ulnar nerve, something like that. Um, those are all called ventral rami. And then we can telescope the nerve just like we can the muscle. So you can see the body loves to repeat patterns that are useful, that just have benefits to them. And so in the same way that we bundle muscle cells together in connective tissues, we actually bundle neurons in connective tissues. And in fact, we can actually zoom in on this a little bit. So if we actually go like this right here, you can see we're zooming in on a neuron. So what's being highlighted here is going to be the neuron. And it is, again, being wrapped in connective tissues. But if we also look closely, we're gonna come here, you can see that it's projections. These are going to be connecting to muscle cells. And, but I want you to pay very close attention here. This is one individual neuron Yet, we can see that its axons are going to be connecting to one, two, three separate muscle cells in this particular image. You are looking at what something called a motor unit. A motor unit is defined as a lower motor neuron, because there's actually two different types of motor neurons, but a lower motor neuron and the number of muscle cells that it is innervating or attached to. And there's a whole wide number of available ratios, like the smallest ratio you can find inside of the eye. And it's anywhere between like one motor neuron attached to around 10 different muscle cells, maybe as high as 30. And then you can get 
one motor neuron attached to over a thousand, that's 1,000 muscle cells in various other muscles in the body. A real easy example would be gastrocnemius. So you might be wondering, okay, Justin, what are, you, what are you trying to get at with this? Well, I want you to think about it, right? So let's say you wanna contract a muscle. Well, you're gonna send the signal through this lower motor neuron and it's gonna get here and it is then going to send that contractile, contractile signal to the muscle cells. It's gonna stimulate uh, the release of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is then gonna cause an action potential because sodium is gonna flow into the muscle cell. Again, that's a different topic for a different day. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna get an actual contraction but it only contracts the muscle cells that that one neuron is attached to, right? So for example, we can see there's others here, but there are no attachments to it. So what that means is these other muscle cells are not part of this particular motor unit. So what that means is they don't contract unless they need to. So if we go back to my cup, right? If I come to the cup and I grab it, and I use every available motor unit for like biceps, brachii, brachialis, and all the other muscles that are gonna be helping to perform this action, I would throw this cup across the room. But that is not helpful. And so what happens instead is there's actually different, like uh, basically you can put the motor units and you can uh, kind of separate them and segment them into different sizes. So one, a motor unit, um, can be attached to slow twitch fibers. You can have a different kind of motor unit attached to type 2A fibers, another motor unit attached to type 2X fibers. Those are just the, dip so you probably, cause you've probably heard of like slow twitch versus fast twitch. Um, and that actually matters. So what that means is if you're doing like this nice smooth, I just want to pick up my cup and I want to drink it type of scenario, you don't need like <laughs> this burst of, of action in that moment. Instead, you're just going to rely on a slow twitch motor recruitment. And so what's happened is the signal is going to come down and it's going to only engage a certain amount of those motor units and you should have a nice, um, you know, smooth contraction. Now this is something you learn over the course of your lifetime. If you've ever been around a newborn, newborns are intense, okay? I'm just now starting to grow my beard out again a little bit because my daughter has officially moved out of the stage where she would just grab it and rip it. They're strong, right? Kids don't often know their strength. And that is because they are learning this process of how many motor units do I fire in order to achieve this particular movement at a very smooth and just honestly like a, a normal um, amount, right? Like you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to underdo it um, because otherwise things are going to be absolutely nuts. So what happens is you again you fire the motor unit. Yes. And but you're going to, you know, over time you learn how to fire and just looking at something, understanding I have a pretty good sense of how many I need to actually fire. But at the same time, as you're picking up something, right? so I have like my little cup here, but I also have my Getty. Um, so this thing right here is heavier, right? So what's going to happen, let's say I come in, I grab my cup, for example, right? When I grab this cup, there's going to be feedback too. As I start to lift my muscles, this is all happening very fast. My muscles are understanding how much tension is there and they're able to kind of do some processing some calculus and you lift the cup precisely but it's like I then have to do the same thing with the Yeti and it's a bit of a slower process because there's more resistance as I'm lifting this my body's kind of like oh, I gotta I gotta put more motor units into that but I want you to think about this what if right what if I was just like closing my eye oh I'm just grabbing the Yeti grabbing the Yeti I do it a few times I close my eyes I'm grabbing it and someone pulls a prank on me and what they do is unbeknownst to me they switch it out and they put the cup down and I think it's going to be the Yeti. What would happen is my brain does not know that obviously that's going to happen and I'm going to recruit more motor units than I need. And in that event, I likely would throw the cup, right? This is a learned behavior to control the number of motor units for any particular action. And it's a really interesting thing that you can just break down um, in terms of just motor neurons, muscle physiology and how it all works. And again, this is part of a larger study unit 
all about motor neurons. It just goes into so much. There's so much here. We have our quizzes. We, I mean, there's so much packed into this. And again, we're going to go ahead and share the separate study unit on reflex arcs, but we're going to share a free study unit down the description below. Strongly encourage you to check it out. It is definitely going to be worth your time. Um, again, we just recently launched our physiology section. It's something we are so excited about, and I know you will be excited too. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something really interesting. If you did, go ahead and like this video. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you'd like us to discuss in future videos. But I appreciate you hanging out with me, and I will see you next time.